The Marvel Cinematic Universe, the most successful franchise ever, three phases of telling a grand story, then I don't know what happened. Because suddenly the MCU got way better. Let me tell you why phases 4 and 5 is actually when the MCU got good. So, Marvel started in 1967, when they made the Fantastic Four show. It's about Doctor Doom, who hates these guys. Like, really hates them. He lands in New York with a spaceship, then gets in a taxi, calls them ahead to say I'm coming over there to kill you. There is no evil plan, he has a gun and shows up at the office. At some point, Hollywood called Marvel and said we want to turn your cartoons into movies. Specifically Spider-Man. And it was the biggest success ever. Now everyone was making superhero movies. Unfortunately for Marvel themselves, they had licensed off their most famous characters. All they had left were a bunch of dated randos. And Hawkeye. But what if we make individual movies, then make an event movie? That is colossally stupid. If one movie fails, your entire project will collapse and you will have lost everything you spent on it. The most famous hero they had was Iron Man, who everyone thought was a robot. To direct it, they got the director of Elf, okay? And they cast the worst SNL cast member ever, okay. Dead on Arrival When Iron Man came out, it was a massive hit. Tony Stark is a rich playboy weapons maker. Then one day, enemies in Afghanistan get a hold of American weapons. Hmm... Seriously though, if this missile doesn't kill you, someone is pocketing money. Now he's been caught by 10 rings. They believe in being terrorists. The region is so complex, sometimes you just wanna have fun. They want Tony to build high-tech missiles instead of something practical or cheaper. Tony, instead, invents infinite energy. I mean, if you wanna bring chaos to the Middle East, that is way better than any missile. With it, Tony becomes various scrap metals man. Now that Tony's back, he has grown a conscience. N no, he's grown efficient. There won't be any need for weapons manufacturing if I kill all of America's enemies. So he builds a new suit and starts doing that. But uh oh, plot twist! It was his father's co-worker, uh, like the third act is a bit here and there. In the end, Tony beats the bad guy, reveals his identity, and he's a better person now. But what's this? A post credit scene? Princess <laughs> Daisy! Skip it and you won't understand a goddamn thing. I saw the 2003 Hulk at a friend's house, and I hated it. So I have never seen this until now. This is the best movie I have seen in my entire life. It's about... I don't wanna spoil it. The film really underperformed. The MCU is dead. There's obvious moral fatigue. They tried to rescue it with... Unnecessary sequel. Tony has created world peace. He actually did it. He killed all of America's enemies. Including Terrence Howard. Unfortunately for Tony, a Russian guy built something similar of way lower quality. It works! No politician got involved by making it. No one remembers this movie. They remember something about a race and Elon Musk being in it. Hires Black Widow. Oh yeah, Tony Stark is dying. Fortunately, his dad is like, Tony, if you ever need to build an energy heart to keep you alive, but now it's slowly killing you, I hid the solution in the Disney Epcot ripoff. I wonder how many other theoretical problems he recorded? In the end, Tony beats the bad guy, and he's now a better person. Post credit, hammer time! Had to read books from the 1870s for the Swedish names. Thor is about us being right, eat the dick of the religions. A village in Norway was attacked by frost giants, so the gods had to invade Jettehem, World War One in a tree. 1000 years later, Thor wants to become king. When a couple of frost jettar sneak into a vault and die, Thor suggests total giant extermination. No. He seems stable. Goes to do it anyway. Löfe, she says, please leave. Thor sucker hammers an old lady. Gets exiled. Th this is the second time we see Natalie Portman fall in love with someone who wants to exterminate a people. Back home, Loki sees his power. Sends down a monster that appeared in many uh, Jutland runestones. A giant fucking robot. The manic pixie turned Thor into a nice guy. He can now have Mjölner back. Beats up Luke and destroys the Bedrest. Post credit, the cube. Captain coming again to save the motherfucking day. Yeah. We find out Norwegians had the godlike power stone. 
Do you know how lucky we are they never used it? Would have made every pizza microwave pizza. This is Steve. He wants to go to Germany. Me too, man. Little beer. Some pretzels. A doctor sees him trying and he's like, Ein schonen protagonist. Invites him for an experiment. We are going to inject, as you say, a uh, salmon from the muscular animals into his veins. It worked. America uses him as a propaganda tool. But oh no, his friend Bucky has been kidnapped. Does he have any infiltration skills? No, but he can punch really hard. Rescues everyone. Faces Red Skull, who tells him... Ach nein, Kapitän, wenige Staaten genau! Is what he would have said. But apparently everyone in Germany speaks English. Except background characters sometimes. Red Skull is planning to blow up cities with laser beams. Hallo, Captain America! Uh, you, we, we, are hum we are not human, we are not gods, yes? Verstehe? English is hard. I appreciate that you tried. They fight and Red touches the cube and gets sucked into space. Okay. Cap freezes, he wakes up, they try to ease him into it, but uh, there are places in New York that haven't aged for 70 years. You can just wake him up there instead of next to Times Square. But now he's ready for the next blockbuster, here we go! Disney got Marvel super cheap. The film starts with Loki teleporting to Earth. Killing Fury?! Good. Now they can't drive his character through a wood chipper. This is literally war. Time to Avengers the Assembled. First Black Widow. Then who this? But that's a good thing for shareholders. Now Hulk can show up in anything. Captain America. Everyone's making jokes about how Cap would be racist now? No. Well, maybe. But he talked about getting beat up a lot. I'm sure he learned to read the room. Then the t Tony guy. To find Loki, they board a flying aircraft carrier to get a bird's eye view. There he is, in Stuttgart. That is not Stuttgart. Like, at all. Loki starts speaking to them in English, so he's as confused as I am. Tony shows up and blasts him. Now they're on a plane. Hey, bad weather. Your existence disgusts me, Cap. Seriously, go die. Thor is here. The trio fights in the forest. Go back to the ship and keep on fighting, verbally. Natasha tricks Loki by revealing his Hulk plan, but I don't see how that was his plan. It seems to have been have Hawkeye solo the entire Avengers, which he does rather successfully, to be honest. Agent Coulson, the guy who's been holding the entire universe together, dies. Everyone is sad. They got better. 40 minutes of fighting nameless drones. Finally, S.H.I.E.L.D. decides we should nuke Manhattan. But Tony guides the nuke to take down the aliens. All the robots died. The Avengers did it. And I respect the senator who is like, man, the heroes should also pay for the damages. Alien invasion, alien information, I could have taken them with no damage. post credit scene shows a new guy who has an RGB share. We printing money now! The villain in this film is Aldrich Killen. The villain in this film is the Mandarin. He hates Anthony Stark. Clearly Middle East inspired, but called the Mandarin? Fan of the fruit? One day he blows up the Chinese theater, and John Favreau was there. Everyone is wondering about no bomb at the site? But my first question would be, uh, how has this random extremist heard of like a regional semi-famous cinema? Tony mad. Destroys a phone. Mandarin destroys his house. Must have been a Huawei. The US just allows hostile attack helicopters? Iron Man lands in Tennessee. Meets a kid who tracks down the Mandarin for him. He's in Maheme. Tony goes there and pow pow pow! Triple in the head. In the end, Potts gets fire powers. Never mentioned again. Tony removes his electro heart and he's a better person now. There was a Chinese version of this film that had a commercial for milk and extra scenes with a Chinese doctor that didn't fit at all. 2010's Hollywood man. Oh wow, rock bottom for a while. Malekith. My old books don't mention him. He's stolen from Warhammer. Thor's mom dies. She had almost seven sentences. Uh, Lu Luke dies? Yeah, okay. And uh, baby Yoda left with uh, Luke forever. What else happens? Uh, nothing. Svart Alvarmor is pretty cool though. Oh, and post credit scene is a guy getting a box. They have changed the post credit scene. It used to be about hyping the next film. Now it's about stuff that will come up later. This changes again in Phase 4. Oh wow, peak for a while. Captain America runs past the Falcon three times. They are now best friends. Run past me and you've made an enemy for life. Cap has a list of stuff he missed that changes from country to country. The 1978 Spanish Constitution. 
he is in Washington, gonna get some weird interests. At the office, Nick Fury shows Cap flying kill anyone on the planet machines. Nick. Badass. Fury has the drivers for these things on a USB stick, but he forgot the password. Tired of his nonsense, SHIELD IT support sends the Winter Soldier to kill him. Nick Fury is dead! Good. Later, Cap gets in an elevator and 10 muscular soldierly types walks in. Nothing bad happens. Don't judge people based on their looks. You called Cap racist. Still, he becomes a wanted criminal because he's speeding on a small road. If you are a fugitive in Washington, people would expect you to go very far away. But they wouldn't expect you to go to New Jersey. An old computer. Mutant talk. It started on second Hydra in S.H.I.E.L.D. Supposed to rule dimension in secret, yeah? Got too complex and frustrating. Gave up, built fleeing death machines. Let's leave New Jersey. Hey Falcon, we're wanted fugitives. But remember when I ran past you three times? <gasps> the Winter Soldier found them! And he's Bucky! And just as they are about to die, they get rescued by Nick Fury! He lives! But how do we catch the secret bad guys? We trick them! <coughs> to the owner of the Volkswagen Golf, your car is being towed. Hydra defeated! Who are these people? Peter Quill, aka Star Lord, gets kidnapped after losing his mother to cancer. I've had a worse day. Got Red Ring of Death when ODST came out. Fast forward to him, character introducing. And finding an orb everyone wants. Wacky hijinks ensue. Leading to him, Daddy Issue Girl, a raccoon, a tree, and David Bautista escaping prison. The villain is some guy who has a deal with the RGB chair guy to get him the orb. He's the dad of a... Uh, you can tell from everything. Orb contains an infinity stone? This is a super powerful crystal that kills everything. Except cameraman, apparently. See? Girl tries to grab it. Kills everything, but the camera keeps on rolling. But in the end, a guy we've never seen hold a camera uses it to shoot fire at a bad guy. Curious. They did it. They are now the only franchise not to die after Endgame. Avengers 2 Electric Villain New. The Avengers are attacking a Hydra base in Sokovia. What's a Sokovia? Sometimes writers want a poor white country, but they don't want to research Eastern Europe. They encounter- wait, there's a third Olsen sister. Yeah, good luck getting out of that shadow. And uh, non-iconic Quicksilver. Wanda, a witch, triggers Tony's worst fear. Everyone dying. So when he finds out an alien artifact is in fact running facade, he decides I should put this in a world peace mega weapon. Ultron. It immediately checks the internet and goes, nah. Ain't doing this. Learning from the internet was a 50% chance he would either want to pound humanity to death or just pound it. It now wants to dominate the world. And it learned that the first step in doing that is to steal from Africans. His team gets attacked! Hawkeye. Consistent W. He's a consistent W taker. Ultron also wants to become more human. That's the other 50%. Robots can't get an erection. Avengers steal his body and put Tony's computer in it. Exclusively the other 50%. Favorite category, redheads. So they go to Sokovia and have a big battle. Quick dies, Hulk goes to space, Tony retires. Now we knew Avengers could sell anything. And Disney was in for a treat. If you had bought 10 Disney stocks before Ultron came out, you would have earned negative $300. Disney, what are you doing? Everyone look! Profit is fighting other Profit! The Scarlet Witch has lost her accent. How many years has it been? The gang is in Nigeria. Kill like 50 people. UN is pissed, according to generic US politician who is not the president because he's got a moustache. Avengers will no longer be private. They were? Cap is like, video game companies that are private are objectively better. But Tony responds, Yes, sure, but their market cap is limited, and can usually not release big budget games every year. Civil War. At the UN, meet the Wakandans. I will now do a perfect African accent. What do you mean, no? UN goes, BOOM! It was the Winter Soldier! It can't be. He's in Romania. The, okay, uh, the attack was in Vienna. They are in Bucharest. The police is German. Americans. After Bucky's capture, he gets interviewed by a psychiatrist. But he has a German accent. Like a bad guy. He destroys Germany's electricity, then starts speaking Russian. I'm sure there's a joke here, but I ain't making it. Bucky goes mad. Gets better. We should call Tony. 
Nah, we should gather a crew and have a superhero fight at an airport. They meet up at Berlin Airport. I like Tears of the Kingdom. Bucky likes Baldur's Gate. Civil War! Spoiler alert, all of Tony's team is dead or owned by Sony. After getting enough of civil warring, the three meet a psychiatrist in Siberia. He shows that Bucky killed Tony's parents. Oh, he was brainwashed. Look, if someone on bath salts killed your parents, you, you would most likely be pissed. So they civil war some more and Cap wins. Hi, Miss German guy. Why'd you do all this? I owned you. I in game shopping in Sokovia, selling from both private and public developers. Now, I sell no games. What a villain. Peak! We can now turn anyone into a household name. Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor Strange. Honestly, his performance and cool visuals make this film. There's a Buddhist temple. They're vegetarian. One disciple was Danish. And uh, keep a Dane away from his pork. Witness true insanity. There's a surge now. Oh god, another New York hero. Oh, he's in a car crash. Okay, makes sense because it's the only place in the USA where people don't drive. Now he can't be a surgeon. So he goes to Nepal and gets mugged by a multi ethnic gang? <laughs> we'll cast Tilda Swinton. And she's Celtic. Meets another actor named Benedict. That must have been a riot on set. They have no idea what the villain wants. Uh, I can't understand what he's saying. But it all comes down to Strange having a super OP weapon. Everyone else is walking around with like brass knuckles, but he's but he's walking around with a portable Nimitz class aircraft carrier. Hey! The original Nick Fury. This thing is loved by kids and shareholders alike. The Guardians are out stealing shit when they get saved by Star Lord's dad. He's a planet. How did Pete's mom... Yeah, he'd lose every Yo Mama fight. Dad wants to conquer the universe, but to do that he needs a kid. But that's a lot of intergalactic child support, so if they didn't have powers, he killed them. Star-Lord has superpowers! Perhaps they all had powers, but developed them later in life. Pop's assistant, Mantis, aided in the killing of all those children. She's horrible. Oh, she's comedic relief! I forgive her, put her in the Guardians and revert back to status quo. Also, this guy had an arc. He's like the second liked person to die in the MCU. Japanese Spider-Man was peaks, but I guess he's still Japanese. I've been a Spider-Man fan since I was four years old. I have even bought one comic. Didn't understand anything at all. Never bought a comic ever again. In this one, the Vulture gets shot down by the man who don't want hostile entities to get alien tech. That pisses him off, so he sells hyper-advanced weapons to street criminals? Bro. This is Peter Parker. He was bitten by a radioactive spider and thus wants to join the whining circle jerk the Avengers currently are. Tony responds, No, you have no idea what you're doing. You could get someone killed. Peter spends the rest of the film not getting a single person killed. Destroys the neighborhood, everyone lives. Lets his friends take an explosive crystal on a school trip, it's fine. Messes up so hard he cuts a boat in half, no one hurt. Peter, you haven't killed a single person so far. Such a little bitch, I'm taking your suit. Aww. Sad Peter decides to ask a girl out. Plot twist! Peter gets in the car. And the vulture hands him a pizza and the music starts! He's Spider-Man! Nods and flies off to rob a plane, mid-flight, instead of like bribing airport security. Spidey comes along, knocks him out by crashing the plane, killing the pilots, and endangering many many people, like a true Avenger. He's black y'all, and he's- Years ago, in the 70s, a meteorite filled with super metal crashed into Africa. Now it's a high-tech society. Well, well, how did that happen? Well, well. Shut up. Wait, they speak a South African language in Central Africa? Wakanda is the unrealist. T'Challa is to be crowned king. To do that, he needs to fight anyone who disagrees. Like the philosophical debate about technology outpacing humanity. Now I support it. And the range kiss has been stealing super metal with a guy whose hairstyle will be put on every single black character. The Wakandans wants to kill Andy, so they send the king to do it. Fortunately, the CIA is the voice of reason. But uh-oh! Killmonger is here to save him! To kill him! To sell him! Hey, I wanna be king. Because I'm pissed off there isn't a Wakandan Monroe Doctrine. Really should have had checks and balances. T'Challa is dead! Killmonger is now king, but at what cost? No one in Wakanda will get his references. My fellow Africans, we're gonna send out vibranium weapons randomly. 
Oh! He knows the weapons will end up in the US through money. He's a goddamn double agent. Wakanda has been colonized. Yeah, T'Challa's dead, but he had just been to Korea. Realizing the Wakandan afterlife will only have like isolated Wakandan food, he comes back to life. He's gonna kick Killmonger's ass using stressed out CGI artists. This time T'Challa won. We shall now teach the world. It would be pretty funny if they went nation to nation and was like, why you let the people elect leaders instead of just having the strongest warrior rule? The UFC would have to be nationalized. Yeah, one good out of four. Thor needs to stop suit from destroying Asgard, but oh no! Thor's crazy sister, hell! I don't think that's right. But I've lost my 1800s PDFs. Ends up on a garbage planet meets Hulk? One thing I've noticed is that everyone is speaking English. You probably point out, uh, Tolkien, blah blah blah. Here's the thing though, those are American type sports fans. Put two and two together, I'm thinking there's a high chance the universe is filled with space yanks. Meanwhile, on Asgard, nothing of importance is happening. The film ends with everyone being on a ship, but a bigger ship is in front of them. Marvel was at its peak. It was time for the finale. Everyone was gonna watch it. Except Martin Scorsese, who said his correct quote, Marvel movies are not cinema, it's like theme park. But if you like them, your mother drank during pregnancy. Then she kept it up causing her to drop you. It's actually an achievement that they made this work. The film begins with piracy. This is Thanos, he wants the Tesseract. But first he has to kill Thor and beat up Hulk. So we know the big bad of the series is strong and doesn't lose to Ant-Man. Thanos wants the Infinity Stones and he got one now. Power Stone acquired. Banner survives and lands in front of Doc Strange. Finally, Sherlock actor who played English meets Sherlock actor who is playing American. What are the Infinity Stones? They are bullion cubes for like space stuff. If you gather all of them, you get a wish. Thanos wants to use his wish to kill half the population in the universe. Don't overthink it, it'll make your head hurt. Also, he has like the biggest army ever, and that's just not true. They're here. The biggest army in the universe sends down two guys. To be fair, all the soldiers will probably try to steal the stone. Doctor Strange gets kidnapped. Iron Man, Spider-Man and the Cape goes after them. In space, we get 70s music. They will have funk in 50 years. Guardians pick up Thor, who tell them Thanos is headed to nowhere. Because we gave the reality stone to some guy. Why? Don't be like that. It was Thor of the Dark World. We are lucky it made some sense. They are now to spit up. The useful will go to Nida Veller and get a weapon. The kinda, eh, will go and fight Thanos. Meanwhile... Wanda and Vision are in Britain. So Vision gets stabbed, fight to King's Cross North. Here, I do wonder if they made Captain America a New Yorker specifically so this scene would work, so he would know what a train station is. Meanwhile, in nowhere, she did it! <gasps> Gasp! Plot twist! That was so funny. I got the stone two hours ago. Been waiting for someone to use stone. Thanos gets his daughter back from her criminal boyfriend. Doctor Strange is being tortured. Hey you! Pew 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 pew! Was there a reason for you to jump down and warn him of your presence? On Thanos' ship? The galaxy has limited resources. We must kill to save the galaxy. You don't know that! There were limited PS5s, now they're everywhere. But there are no games, Gamora. He brings out Faramira, who Boromira told she knows where the soul stone is, is on Boromir. Spider-Man and co land on Titan and get attacked by only the dumb guardians. Tony asks Star-Lord if he's from Earth, not realizing they use the Latin name Terra, because even male Xenos think of Rome. Pop and daughter fun time. Hello Thanosen! Do you speak English? Yeah, yeah. You have to throw something uh, you love. I am sad, but so long, Gigamora. Nine, you didn't have to throw a person. You could have thrown just like your favorite horse. Soulstone acquired. Cap and the gang go to Wakanda to separate the stone from vision. Advanced civilization attacks less developed African nation. Killmonger would have called it karma. Meanwhile, Thanos arrives on Titan. Girl, you live like this. Yes, it was. Kaboom! We got him. Just as they are about 
to take his glove. This aeole is like, damn, where's Gamora, Star-Lord? Hey, Star-Lord, hey, where is she? Uh, then Thanos throws a planet at him. It's GGVP. Let Tony survive. I saw you, you won't be in the sequel anyways. All right, bet. Thanos is now in Africa. Beats up everyone, resurrects Vision, almost dies. Don't celebrate before finishing. And then he does it. It's a powerful ending where everyone who isn't a fan favorite except two actual fan favorites die. I am sad. The post credit shows hints of the new phase of the MCU. New main character just dropped. It starts on Kree. They are at war with the Skrull. In the true canon, the Skrull come to Earth but they can't plant their flag because that's solid concrete! Never mind, I love New Yorkers. This is Carol Denvers. She's on a mission. Her ship blew up and she landed in some time in history. No offense to New Worlders, but there's no 90s without Eurodance. Oh, we get to see how Nick Fury lost his eye. Thank you, Marvel! In the real canon, Invisible Girl outsmarts him. Then they force him to turn into a cow and lobotomize him so he can't turn back. That's actually what that's actually what happens. I don't think anyone cares about this movie. Wait, it made as much as Civil War. Was it because it was between the biggest movies of all time? No, it held it back because people were avoiding spoilers. Ant-Man and the, let's discuss the Thanos theory. These goddamn science YouTubers are saying it wouldn't work. Fine. But what if Ant-Man went up there and massaged his prostate? Wouldn't that prove the value of the individual saving everyone? We're in the writing corner now. Tony's stuck in space with what's her name? We're all thinking it. Virus or STD? Captain Marvel? He's back. They immediately start having a conversation. Can we wait a minute? At least give Tony a Red Bull. We can't beat Thanos. Smells like a bitch in here. I could take Thanos with my pinky tied behind my back. I like her. You, you're alone there, buddy. They go to visit Thanos. Oh, hey, guys. I destroyed the Chaos Emeralds. Plot twist! Thanos goes out a winner. This makes the whole film feel kinda weird. Because the main antagonist is another guy. Five years later, in the distant future of 2023, Look, I got my psychology degree in 38. I recommend Scotch. Ant-Man lives! Shows up and says, guys, time travel will solve this. Did you give up? Let's ask Tony's opinion. Um, I'd love to help, but uh, look how happy I am. It's almost like the writers are trying to set up something tragic. You did give up. This sucks. That night, Iron Man solves time travel. He's a weapons engineer. Let's gather the Avengers. First, these two in Iron Man 2, who are now friends. Could we get that film? Thor, welcome to Tunsberg. That is not Southern Norway. Norwegians, as discussed, only eat frozen pizza, not- I bet, even though half their workforce got snapped, Epic still fired all those people. Men will literally go around killing organized crime members instead of going to therapy. Let's gather the stones through time travel. Shlop. They're back in 2012. Must be nice. Some are allowed to be embarrassed of whom they were in 2012. You are not one of them. Okay, since this is the final Marvel film, you could do one of two things. Try for a really satisfying ending or fan service galore. With Infinity War, they did the first one, so now it's fan service o'clock. Great to watch at the cinema on Disney Plus. But what's this? When Nebula goes to 2014, she gets hooked up to the Wi Fi. Her head remembered the password. Thanos catches on quick. What's going on? My working theory is that in nine years, a rat releases Ant-Man from- Only the genius failed, so let's go further back in time. And raid an army base. The last Stan Lee cameo. The last community cameo. Tony finally manages to get the stone. But his dad's there! You look nervous, Port. Um, no sir. I think I know what's going on. Don't worry, comrade. Soon the revolution will come here too. Cap is thinking about stopping a family from being created. Nebula gets replaced would be caught immediately with how many pop culture references the Avengers make. Yeah, yeah, I know. On Voromir! Hallo! Welcome in Hogage und der schwarze Widowen! Who's gonna jump? I have a family. You're a hitman. She's fine. There's a movie about her coming out. They did it. But who should make the wish? You don't know that you are on a timetable. Just call Captain Marvel. Time traveling the nose! Eventually, Hulk makes a wish because the writers hate him. Yay! They're all dead. 
None of them are dead. It's 2014 Thanos. How did the CGI improve? My next snap, I will destroy Marvel. Then I'm gonna start a new MCU without any popular characters and meh films. Good Nebula meets evil Nebula. I used to be like you. Then I took an arrow to the knee. You don't get it, but it's it's the funniest thing. Skyrim came out in 2011. Audience, cheer! Cheer harder! Here comes what you paid the ticket price for. Gonna show you the Rise of Skywalker moment instead. Now they fight! Um, hey Doctor Strange? Bro, you're gonna die, bro, you're gonna die! Wanda is about to kill Thanos, but goes full Vegeta. Oh, I'm having too much fun. He gets to order a bombardment. Then Captain Marvel comes down from space, penetrates a spaceship. Yes, these are women. <gasps> No! Thanos has the thing! She, she just went through a spaceship. Just go through Thanos. Just as Thanos is about to snap, Iron Man steals the stones and gets the wish. They all turn to dust and Tony passes. What sucks even more is that Thanos had already set the stone settings to get what he wants. Oof, this is rough. Bittersweet ending. And that was the MCU. What a fun romp. Peter doesn't know that MJ and me do it in my van every Sunday. They're doing Euro Trip. That's where I keep my stuff. My school had financial problems after a bus trip to Stockholm. First Venice. An elementally di acqua. Gas per favore. Attacks. Gets defeated by Mysterio. Nick Fury. If you thought Nick falling for this hurts his character, it's actually not the lowest they will go with him. He gives a 16 year old instant global hitman glasses. Almost kills his classmate. Should I kill them? He could have delivered the great power great responsibility speech. Now they're in Prague. A country. Such a joke for teenagers. The Prague Opera being empty during the Signal Festival might be more unrealistic than space speaking English. Ragnaros attacks! They defeat him. After, Peter goes to a bar in Prague and makes a mistake. This is the most relatable thing in the MCU. If you didn't know, I think he's a good twist villain, because this is a Sony movie. MJ jumps to the conclusion that Peter is Spider-Man! Then they jump to the conclusion that Mysterio is bad. Gotta get to Berlin! In Berlin, gets the shit kicked out of him. Grabs a train, wakes up in Broke Oplang Dyke, which is in North Holland! He's in Holland! Censor that, Cap! Happy picks him up. Mysterio is attacking London, England, per chance? Peter goes in and pow pow pow! Next Iron Man. post credit scene, the actual J. Jonah Jameson shows Peter murdering Mysterio, then reveals his identity. Second post credit scene sucks. Oh, that was still phase 3. Now phase 4 starts. Oh boy. Phase 4 starts with Black Widow. Then it didn't, because people refuse to go to the cinema for some reason. Instead, phase 4 will start with a hole you can just throw money into. Your first question is probably, will I have to watch these series to understand the main films? <laughs> of course not. That would be business suicide. Two new shows. First out was WandaVision. This was my kind of jam. Then for some reason, there's a CG fight in my cult mystery show. Wanda has kidnapped and tortured a bunch of people, forcing them to live through TV history. And in the end, a woman is like, Wanda, you know who's the victim here? You are. Yeah, you are. What happened? You see, Marvel is changing the TV game by not using showrunners or TV executives. You're a billion dollar public company. You can never be bold. This is because you are cheap. The sheer incompetence that is Disney Plus impresses me to no end. Second show was Marvel comments on US politics. It wasn't the first superhero property to do so. Uh, the first one was Legends of Tomorrow on the CW. You see, Gorilla Grodd, king of Gorilla City, traveled back in time to kill Obama, but the legends are on Obamacare, so they have to stop him from making America Grodd again. What I'm saying is Falcon didn't stand a chance because the gold standard had been set impossibly high. The show is about him and the Winter Soldier fighting terrorists, then in the end he says the controversial line, you gotta do better center. But the social problems of this series don't appear in any future Marvel projects. 
He was out of line, but he was right. The senator went home and he did better. Finally Loki. It's pretty good. I think season 2 was better. Good ending does a lot. I ain't explaining what happened. The first season's ending introduces the next big bad. Kang the Conqueror. Oh no! We need several layers regarding development hell. The film started production in 2004. Now she's dead. It takes place in 2016. She's a wanted criminal and is hiding in Norway. Like actual Norway. But then the radio is an American speaking Swedish. Black Widow has to confront her past. She's, she's Russian. Can't she just do the Dear Drake of Drakovich? I am not. Taskmaster is here. A fan favorite. Did they do him justice? How should I know? Is the film good though? It's alright. If it came out in 2016. Now it's... Um, what even are these budgets? It bombed, but it was also released on Disney Plus at the same time. There was a lawsuit and everything. post credits scene sets up Thunderbolts. An upcoming box office bomb. What if Wakanda was set in the Balkans? Oh, Asians! A shared universe is like a fork coming together. Asians use chopsticks, so not allowed. But this is the multiverse saga. Chang-Chi is good enough. Character is likable, like early Avengers. The last act is bad, like early Avengers. It's about Chang-Chi, who's a trained assassin. His dad's the Mandarin. Wait, Aldrich Killian. Pow, pow, pow! Right in the head. It was successful, but they haven't started on sequel yet. The state of Disney. Also, with the 2020 chaos, we now get a new movie directly after this one. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? The GOAT's very own show. This is one of the best Marvel shows. Is it good? No. But it's okay. Consistent okay. I'm lying, it's the worst show ever made because of this scene. Have you ever eaten reindeer? I cannot say I've had the pleasure. No, no it is not a pleasure. Why are you lying? It's like one of the freshest meats there are. Eating a truffle reindeer pasta right now. It's delicious. 1 out of 20. The Marvel lives! Everyone knows Peter is Spider-Man! And half the people are pro the guy they knew for less than a week, instead of the guy who fought Thanos. Now he and his friends can't get into college, because American colleges famously don't like attention or celebrity alumni. He has a plan. Erase all memory of his reveal. And delete the video, right? That, that's easy. That's a standard Spider-Man game stealth mission. The world's greatest surgeon can't handle the pressure. Now all the Spider-Man villains are here, including Glow Up Electro, like a light bulb. Jamie Foxx is a great Electro. Why they cast him as Electro? Doctor Strange says, "Kill them all." Pete says, "No," and locks him in another dimension without food and water. Pete wants to make them soy boy beta males. The problem is Green Gobbo traveled universes, traveled studios and franchises to be Spider-Man's most iconic villain. And he succeeds. Gonna have to applaud alone. I had to convince myself this was only good because of fan service, but it's actually good. I am a victim of gaslighting. Non-Bully Maguire takes this far too well. He's pretty far into his Spider-Man career, probably traveled universes a lot. Andrew just brought his end game. All the villains are defeated. Uh-oh! Green Goblin is destroying the universe. We see MCU Peter at his lowest. Then he tells Strange to make everyone forget Peter's existence. Really bittersweet ending. But Pete, you, you can be honest with Happy. I had Doctor Strange cast a spell to make everyone forget me to save the universe. Like, he, he'd get it. Between films, there's Moon Man. And I don't know. Uh, got Disney Plus for this, been watching Good American Dad episodes with my morning coffee. Can recommend that start the day with two smiles. To simulate the multiverse, we rewrote this multiple times. It's bad. Really bad. New York gets attacked by an octopus chasing a generic teen character. The octopus was actually Wanda? What? How? You had to watch WandaVision for it to make sense. But if you watched WandaVision, it didn't make any sense. I think this could have been a cool character. Young, forced to travel the multiverse, like a, a jaded survivalist who's seen everything instead of like girl Bart Simpson. The laziest writing I've ever seen was in this movie. She accidentally killed her parents. How does the film show that? There's a store that sells memories and it used it as an advert for the store. That's how you can tell it wasn't written by AI, because it wouldn't be that lazy. Mr. Fantastic was gonna be in this film? He's not. That guy is not Reed Richard. He dies instantly. The real Reed Richard would have been all, I 
will now use my magic to kill you all. Not so fast, madam. When I heard you were a witch, I invented the anti-magic radio sensor. I can't use my magic! Exactly. Arrest her, Ben. While me and Black Bolt will go out for some smooth Winston cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, come along, toots. Wanda dies in prison. Miss Marvel was the main character in that cash grab. She's a Pakistani immigrant and the series is for them, and they allegedly enjoyed it. It performed badly, it's a very small niche. I don't know much about Pakistan myself, except for the fantastic Sonic commercials. I'd watched a series about a Pakistani 3D animator, but I skipped this, not my cup of chai. This is such a waste. Poor Christian. Imagine watching something related to the MCU and it's just a bunch of jokes. Biggest MCU plot twist is this first scene. Because you think the film is gonna be good, then boom, hot garbage. There's a god killer on the loose. How dangerous is he? First time we see him fight, he runs away. Thor gets put down in every scene he's in. Thank you. If there's one character who deserved that, it's Thor. God killer kidnaps children, ah, don't let that stop you from having a good time. Actually, I changed my mind, it's a 10 out of 10 movie, because these goat screams, they are just the funniest thing I've ever seen. There are Mexicans in the water! The passing of Chadwick Boseman was very tragic, he was extremely talented. They had a decision to make what to do with the role. They gave it to Shuri, I don't know if that was a good choice, because the story is a mess. It starts with, no, it's our vibranium, my son was a moron. Seeking. Hey, there's a scientist who can find Vibranium, please kill her. No, we must save her! Hello, I am Riri, I am character trademark. The Aztecs have kidnapped the princess, called Kenyan plumber Super Mukami. Hey Shuri, hello. Let's exterminate humanity. Hmm, some random person right- okay. The film just gets worse and worse. And in the end, they kinda just shake hands and agree to disagree. Marvel Studios, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. I have nothing but the utmost respect for She-Hulk. Some say Hollywood doesn't take risks anymore, but a wacky Marvel comedy for career-focused women, and they spend 250 million dollars on it. More than House of the Dragon. This is the riskiest show that has ever been made. Did it pay off? The Chinese wall was inefficient at keeping out northern barbarians, but today we call it the Great Wall. Sometimes things aren't made for the now, sometimes things are made for legacy. Now it's phase 5, what can I even tell you? I can talk about the worst Marvel project ever, Secret Invasion. Cost 250 million dollars, looks worse than a Swedish noir film. And no one watched it. Flopped so bad Disney went back and licked TV executives boots. Could tell you about the new Ant-Man, but I haven't before. What about the sequel to Timing, the movie? Disney celebrated its 100 year anniversary with box office flops. Spilling the beans at every cinema in the country. And the biggest bean spill is probably the Marvels. A character people don't remember, a character people don't like, and a character people don't know, and a brand new character. Poor, defenseless Disney shareholders. The only hope they have is the last of the Marvel movies. It would have been very satisfying if Disney only released flops all year round, but it's even more satisfying that their only film of quality was a success. I'm not the biggest Guardians fan, but um, even I have to admit that Guardians 3 is shit. It's shit like the rest of Marvel, and the director realized this, so he left to a glorious superior franchise. Let's take a look at the first Captain America film, and look at the Batman film one year earlier. DC will always be better. The Batman is better than Quantum Mania. Joker? is better than Punisher Warzone. When the Marvels just kept making flopping TV shows, a DC comic TV show was literally the most popular show in the world. Uh, we'll put a bunch of iconic music in our film. We'll make the iconic music. Our actor got in legal trouble, so no! Our actor could kill like 50 people and we'd still call it the best film ever made. Oh no, our film is losing a bunch of money doesn't happen to DC because they delete it from existence. And that is the Killian experience. 
Thank you for watching. Please like the video. Favorite rate 5 stars. Next video will be shorter. And uh, I don't know how long it will take. It'll come out. It'll be out when it's out. Watch my other videos about things. Now I should take an improv class.